We kind of are kind of in the book of Psalms these days. Um, just keep praying for me. Amen. Yes. Remember, under the praise and testimonies, uh, there is a wideness in God's loving grace. Amen. Yes. Look to somebody and say part two. Part two. There is a wideness in God's loving mercy. Don't you believe that today? Amen. You have to believe that. You know why? Because when others counted you out and say you weren't going to amount to anything, when others abused and took advantage of you, God still had his hand on you. Ain't that right? When others say, well, I don't think he's going to make it. I don't think she's going to finish her course. That ain't what God said. Amen. Even when the doctor has given up, God is right there. Amen. You got to believe that God is who he say he is. Amen. And that's a wonderful thing. So look at somebody that said, under praise and testimony, there is a wideness in God's loving mercy. Oh, my, my, my. That just do something to your spirit. Amen. And in Psalm 139, starting at verse 1, and I'm going to read a few verses there, and then I'm going to jump down to verses 23 and 24. But I want you to understand something. Of all people that can talk about the mercy and the love of God is David. I mean, a man after God's own heart. And that says something in itself. Regardless of what we might know about somebody, or regardless of what somebody might have done, and regardless of their defect in their character, it's always good to know that you're on the Lord's side. Amen. Oh, come on, somebody. Amen. It's good to know that when others will abandon you and loved ones and family members will say things to you that will hurt you to the core of your heart, it's a wonderful thing to know that if the Lord had not been on my side, Amen. where would I be? I don't know about you today, but uh, sometimes my eyes fill up with tears and I think about how good God been to me. Oh, somebody ought to talk to me right now. My eyes fill up with tears and I don't, I don't need to prove nothing to nobody, but I'm here to tell you sometimes I, I can't even thank the Lord enough. Sometimes I just raise up my hand with tears in my eyes and I, I just want to thank him for all that he has done. Maybe you ain't there yet, but there'll come a time in your life that when you know you could have been gone. Yes. 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 You could have been cut down, but God's mercy was right there. Yes. Yes. Look at somebody and say, under praise and testimony, praise there's, a there's a wideness to God's loving mercy. When I think about all the years that I've gone up and down the expressway, over 38 years to Raleigh, North Carolina, God hand and mercy with that. I've seen accidents happen right before my eyes. I see people get killed. And I've seen all kinds of situations, but God was merciful. When I could have dozed off to sleep, the spirit would quicken my mind. Oh, I'm here to tell you today, God is good. When you walked in your house and somebody could have been there, God was merciful. And when you slipped up and could have broke your neck, God was merciful. When you were going through in your body and your mind and you thought you were going to lose your soul, God was right there. You can't praise him enough. You can't worship him enough. You can't glorify him enough. You can't thank him enough. For it is the will of God. To give thanks for all things. Regardless of what it looks like, regardless of what it appears on the outer appearance, God is still in charge. You know how I know this? Because David wrote a song about it. Psalms 139. He said, O oh Lord, thou hast searched me and you know me. I mean, ain't that nice and though? You didn't check me already out. You already know what I'm made out of. You know my shortcomings, but I thank you for making me. 
He says in verse 2, Thou knowest my sit down setting and my uprising. You know, uh, not only that, but thou understandest my thoughts from afar. I don't think y'all understand here. David, David is trying to tell you and me and trying to allow you and I to understand before you can think a thought, before you can speak a word, God already know what you're going to say. Isn't that wonderful to know? And he know how to put what he needs to put in you so you can speak the right thing. David says in verse 3, he says, Thou compassest my path and my land down and art acquainted with all my ways. You're familiar with me. You, you know my uh, individuality. You know how I think and you know what moves me. You know what makes me happy and I thank you for answering my prayer. He says in verse four, for there is not a word in my tongue. It ain't a word that I'm gonna speak, but Lord, oh Lord, thou knowest it all together. That's proof right there. God knows what you're going to say. Now, this, this, this is interesting because next week is going to come if God spares. Uh, you, don't, you don't have no real plans other than going to work and doing a few things. But before you can get to next week and before you can say anything about next week, before that day show up, God already knows what you're going to say on that day. You mean to tell me he, he knows I'm going to do something? Long before you thought you were going to do it, God knew it. Amen? Amen. Look at somebody and say, long before you thought you knew it, God knew it. He says in verse 5, all together he knows us. Verse 5 says, thou hast beset me behind and before. You've, you've covered me both front and back. You got me covered. You got me enclosed. And you laid thy hand upon me. Not only you got me covered, but you put your hands on me. Oh, my God. You, we, we use that expression from time to time. Now, I don't care what you say, just don't put your hand on me. You hear that expression. Well, come on now, don't y'all look like that at me. I don't mind God putting his hand on me. Come on, somebody. But when somebody else is going to put their hand on you in a violent way, you just simply say, you can do all your big talk, but just don't put your hand on me. Well, I'm here to tell you that I don't mind if God put his hands on me. I don't mind it at all if God put his hand on me, amen? Because I know he's going to protect me, amen? He said in verse 6, such knowledge, as he think about how good God been to him, he says, such knowledge is too wonderful for me. When I think about how good God has been to me, it's too wonderful for me to think about. It is high and I cannot attain unto it. In other words, I can't, Lord, you've been so good to me, I can't even, brother Keith, I can't even figure him out. I don't know how he do what he do for me, but sometimes you can be going through something and, and dealing with something, and God will send your help before you even ask for it. God will call somebody to show up before you can even say, Lord, I need your help. God already got help on the way. Ain't that right, Junior? Come on, somebody. Ain't that right, Mary? Oh, somebody ought to say amen to this. So the value, you know what I'm talking about, you ought to say amen. amen. Oh, my God. He says here, you know me all together. Verse 7 says, whether shall I go from the Spirit? He said, if I try to get away from your Holy Ghost. Now, think about this for a minute. He know all about the Holy Ghost. He said, if I try to get away from thy Spirit, where shall I flee from thy presence? I just can't get away from you, Lord. Not that I want to, but everywhere I go, your spirit is there. Yeah. It's the wideness of the loving mercy of God. Yeah. He says here, or whether shall I flee from thy presence? Verse 8 says, if I ascend up to the heavens, he said, if I go to heaven, I know you're there. Yeah. Even if I mess up and make my bed in hell, I know you're there. Yeah. Oh, yo, come on, somebody. Yeah. The people don't understand this. God is everywhere. And he knows all things at all times. He's omnipotent present. He says in verse 9, he says, If I take the wings of a morning and dwell in the uppermost parts of the sea, where there's no man or beast, 
where nothing can be found, God is there. Isn't that wonderful to know? You, you probably ask yourself, well, if God know everything, come on, somebody. Why well, ain't getting the help I supposed to get? Oh, come on, somebody. If you just be obedient to the Spirit, if you just do what God tell you to do, God will meet you more than halfway. Huh. He says, and he says, even there shall thy hand lead me, and thy right hand shall hold me up. You ever heard these testimonies when people said they had been abandoned last week? A man treaded the water for nine hours, didn't think he was going to make it, but he kept on treading. Are y'all with me on this? Sometimes when you're going through your trial and tribulation, just keep on holding on. Sometimes when you're dealing with the enemy and the adversary and you want to give up, just keep on holding on. Your help is on the way. It's just a matter of time that the Spirit of God will show forth the power of God to help you to overcome whatever you're going through. Just keep on treading. He said, thy right hand shall hold me. He says in verse 11, if I say surely the darkness shall cover me, even the night shall be light about me. Yea, the darkness hide not from thee, but the night shines as the new as the day. And the darkness and the light are pure, are both alike to thee. In other words, God can see in the light as well as see in the dark. Ain't nothing hidden from God. He said in verse 14, and I'm going to jump to verse 23. I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Oh my God. Marvelous are thy works. David said, I've done my own investigation. I've been through some difficult times. And I realize that I'm fearfully and wonderfully made, but when I examine your works, I find that your works are marvelous. And he says, and that my soul knoweth it right well. See, my soul will testify. Verse 23, if you don't mind jumping way down to the end, he says, search me, Lord. Everybody say, search me, Lord. Search me, Lord. Say it like you mean it now. Search me, Lord. He says, search me, O Lord, O God, and know my heart. You hear people say, know my heart. God know my heart, right? Know my heart. Try me. Come on, somebody. And know my thoughts. See, the thing about knowing your thoughts, when you trace your thoughts, you wonder how you got way over there. I don't care if she's pretty or he's pretty and he got a pretty smile in a pocket full of money all he leave behind is his name in a shadow. <laughs> Don't trust it. Put your trust in the Lord. Amen. Amen. For surely he will search me, O Lord, O God, and my thoughts. Amen. Try me and know my thoughts. And see if there be any wicked ways in me. And lead me in an everlasting way. A way everlasting. Amen. Try me. Come on, somebody. You ought to thank God for looking at your life. The Bible says that God even knows the number of hairs that's on your head. It doesn't matter whether you got extension. It doesn't matter whether you got a wig. It doesn't matter whether you comb your hair bald. I have all your hair cut off. God has got your number. Well, you have to say amen. I say amen all by myself. It doesn't matter. God got your number. Look at somebody and say, God got your number. Don't think for one minute it ain't one sparrow that falls to the earth that God don't know about. You know all the different sparrows and different species and kinds of sparrows across the globe and not one of them can drop dead without God's knowledge. Oh, the vastness of understanding God. And don't think for one minute he don't know all about your situation. Look at somebody and say, yeah, oh, God knows about you now. No, don't look at me. Look at them. Oh, yeah. Oh, God knows all about you. I know he knows about you because I just read in Psalm 139 that he even knows your thoughts. I don't know what you're up to, but you better put it up to the Lord so he can deal with it. Amen. 
Because if you know you got some bad thoughts, Lord, you got to sing a song to Jesus when you have a bad thought. Jesus, come on, y'all help me out now. You know when bad thoughts go through your head, you can deal with them. Uh, there's an old adage that's not in the Bible, but you can't stop a bird from flying over your head, but you can stop him from making a nest in your head. Am I talking right? Because you ain't going to have that. You got to make up your mind when the devil tell you wicked thought. You got to get them thoughts out. You got the blood of Jesus Christ. I was talking to a doctor this week and she said, I have all kind of bad thoughts. How do I get rid of this witchcraft mind? I said, you got to start pleading the blood of Jesus. Oh, come on, somebody. She said, the blood of Jesus. I said, the blood of Jesus. Oh, they might give you medicine to try to calm you down, but them demons going to come back, and you got to have something for them. And the only way to fight them is with the blood of Jesus. Somebody say, the blood of Jesus. You want them spirits to let your mind go, you plead the blood of Jesus. If you know you're about ready to do something and God already know you're going to do it, before you do it, he supplies you with the blood of Jesus. And I'm here to tell you today, ain't but one DNA like the blood of Jesus. And once you get stained with the blood, oh, come on, somebody, you won't never be the same. Look at somebody say, once you've been stained, by the blood of Jesus, you won't never be the same. Hallelujah! I, I mean to tell you, look at somebody that said, there's a, under, uh, say it like this, under praise and testimony. There's a wideness in God's loving mercy. You know, it's, it's a wonderful thing to know that all the different people, when I go to study them in the Bible, the more I study them, the more I realize, like me, they got character defects. Well, come on, somebody. Don't y'all look at me like you're perfect now. Because ain't nobody mouth in here is no prayer book. Well, you can do some praying, but sometimes something will slip out. In fact, some of y'all cuss and didn't mean to cuss. But when somebody got on your nerve, you tell them, you better leave me. Amen. Am I talking right? Amen. You didn't mean to cuss, but it came out because them demons would show up and start having you cussing. Amen. They have you saying things and making up things you didn't want to. Amen. Amen. What, what are you trying to say, Pastor? I'm trying to tell you that when, when God first appointed Abraham, yeah. Abraham had a wife named Sarah. Y'all know the story. And the Bible said that God wanted to circumcise Abraham's heart. And we know when you talk about circumcising a man's heart, God was letting him know, I need to change who you are. Y'all know the story. And Abraham was about 99 years old when he was circumcised. Man, that's a long time to be circumcised. Good Lord already. And, and Sarah was about 90 years old when God promised them both long before they turned that age that he was going to give them a child. Yeah. Ain't that right? Yeah. Now you know that's uh, beyond comprehension in the natural, but in God's realm of doing things, it's a small thing. Yeah. Oh, come on, somebody. Yeah. Uh, she didn't went through the flower of her years, and he didn't went through all that he'd been through, and yet they had these children, and after all these years, God promised him a seed. Look at somebody say, when God promised you something, you can hold God to it. Oh my Lord. You know the story that as we read that, that over in the 20th chapter, I, I love this because uh, Abraham before uh, he got in trouble, he, he, he wanted the 20th chapter of Genesis and then the 24th chapter right through all those five chapters. Four or five chapters. You would see that Abraham was 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 uh, going through the land, and and he found out that this is a blessing because we see that Abraham had a servant, and Abraham, when they him and and, and Sarah had Isaac, that that uh, Isaac was an adult man, and he was about ready to get married, and Abraham had a servant that did whatever he told him to do. 
And the servant had to go down to uh, the family unit and the extended family and find a wife for Isaac. The Bible said that while he was praying all unto himself and not even mumbling the words, he said, Lord, send me the woman that you want me to carry back to Abraham. And if she come to the well and offer me water and then offer my camel water, I know it's a sign from you. And the Bible said before he can get the prayer out of his mouth that the woman, Rebecca, showed up at the well. Are y'all with me on that? Sometimes long before you can speak things into existence, God just want to hear you say it. Long before you bring it out in the open, God has already answered your prayer. The Bible said when Rebecca came up, and he asked her, can I have some water? He said, she said, yeah, I'm going to draw you some water, and I'm going to draw you some water for your camera too. I don't think y'all understand that. See, God can send you somebody that's meant for you. He don't want you to just pick up anything, but he wants you to ask him for what you need. Come on, somebody. And way beyond your wants and your needs, I preached here before that God knows your desires. Come on, somebody. Don't y'all look at me like you ain't had but one boyfriend and one girlfriend. Some of y'all wind up with the same old boyfriend and the same old girlfriend because you're looking for the wrong thing. But if you seek God out first, come on, somebody. God will send you the person that's meant for you. Amen? And they may come from a long way, and yet they may be sitting right next to you in church. Oh, I know some of y'all, I don't want to marry nobody in here. I don't want nobody looking like her. They can't even say her. They say her. Come on, somebody. It's important that you understand that God uh, loved Abraham and God had a covenant with Abraham and God promised him a seed and although Ishmael came first by his man, God sent Isaac through his wife Sarah that was the seed of promise. When God promised you something, you can hold God to it. Come on, somebody. And you know the story that he finally put the signal, this, this, this servant put a ring on Rebecca's hand and a bracelet on her arm and took her back after she got approval from her, her father. Uh -huh. oh, come on, somebody. Amen. And y'all know the story that uh, they went on back and, and when, when uh, Rebecca saw Isaac coming across, the Bible says she looked at him and said, who's that good looking man coming? <laughs> Are y'all with me? Read it in the scripture. She observed and asked the servant, who is that man coming? And he said, that's Isaac, the son of Abraham. Amen. Well, come on, somebody. And when Abraham recognized this woman, uh, Rebecca, she got down. He said, come into my household where you would be one woman of many children of many nations. Amen. You see, when God get ready to bless you, you don't know how God is going to bless you. Amen. If you remain faithful and you're in his will, he know what you need before next week show up. He know what you got to have before you ask for. He know the salary you need. He know the job you need. He see your promotion long before you saw it. He see you changing a job long before you even put in the application. Are y'all with me on this? And when you say, Lord, I done had enough, I can't take these people no more. Come on, somebody. And like many of you, like me, we're up on the hilltop looking over the horizon at retirement. Amen. Well, you don't have to say amen. I know what I'm talking about. It's better to be over the hill than under the hill. It's better to be seen than to be viewed. Come on, somebody. I don't know about you, but time is running out. And the days are going by faster. The minute you lay down, it's time to get up. And you wonder how many hours of the night did I sleep? You don't think time going by, the world is spinning faster, or something has happened, but the word said God will shorten the days for the elect sake. His chosen, amen? Well, you know, Abraham got in trouble, you know. You know, when you, 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 you can know, that Abraham had a, had a good heart, but he made some wrong choices. Look at somebody and say, I know somebody that's got a good heart. But they made some wrong choices. You know a few of them, don't you? 
you work with them, some of them you live with them, you say to myself, they, they just only do what I tell them to do, they wouldn't have the trouble they have. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. If you've been places and you know things, come on, somebody, you can teach somebody something. Amen. Oh, my God. Abraham and, and Sarah was going through the land. They were trying to claim what God gave them. And they came into the land of Gerah. And there lived the king of Gerah by the name of Abimelech. And Abraham had told Sarah, look at here. Look at somebody say, look at here. <laughs> we getting ready to go where the enemy is. And you and Sarah was a good looking woman. Come on, somebody. And Abraham loved his wife, but he also was scared for his life. Now, that might not be your case, but I'm here to tell you that the wideness of God's grace and his love and mercy is beyond you and me. And wherever you go, God can protect you. Now, you ain't got no business going down no dark alleyway trying to take a shortcut home. It's better to stay on the main road and get there safely to take a shortcut and something befall you. I wouldn't take no chance. Look at somebody and say, I wouldn't take no shortcut if I were you. Somebody going to need that one day. Come on, somebody. I, I remember I used to go see a girl when I was single and young, way on the other side of town, and it would be dark. And one of the things I dreaded about going home was going home all by myself. Come on, somebody. So I got the M-O-R attitude. Y'all want to know what that is? The middle of the road attitude. I'm going to take me a stick and I'm going to walk in the middle of the road. Y'all been like, you ever been so scared you just walked right in the middle of the road and you had a stick because in case something break out. Well, come on, somebody. And sometime as time went by, I got myself a knife because you don't know who's going to act a fool. Come on, somebody. And I will walk in, and, and as you walk, all you need is a reason to run. You ever been so scared you walk with somebody and both of y'all take off running? And you get to run and say, what was that? He said, I don't know. He said, why you run? Because you were running. Said, man, stop that. You got me crazy. My heart can't take that. Amen. Abraham and Sarah was down in, in Gerah with the king of Bimelech. And he told, Abraham told Sarah, look, we're, we're half brothers and half sisters. You be my sister when we go in the land. Now that's conniving. That's scheming. That's plotting. That can be dangerous in the eyesight of God. Because you can get caught up in the mix. Amen. And Abraham, when he got down there, uh, King Gera uh, 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 of, uh, of Abimelech said, uh, Sarah's a good-looking woman. Bring her into my household and get her all set up. I'm going to marry her. Now think about this for a moment. Abraham was promised a seed by God through Sarah. Sarah is in another man's house because somebody then told a lie. Are y'all with me on this? Maybe y'all ain't ready for this kind of preaching. So now we got a, a, a situation that's already messed up. But you ought to thank God he knows your thoughts and you know how to get you out of the mess you're already in. What are you trying to say, Pastor? I'm saying that when Abimelech was thinking, I can't wait to get my hands on Sarah. Don't y'all look at me like that. He's a man, he was wanting her. And then while he tried to go to sleep, the Bible said that God showed up in his dream. Now you're in trouble if God show up in your dream. I don't care who you are. I don't care how much money you got. I don't care how powerful you are. When God show up in your dream. And speak. You're going to sit straight up. Come on somebody. And God said to King Abimelech. You are as good as a dead man. Amen. He began to talk to the Lord. What, what, what did I do? He said, that woman you got, Sarah, is another man's wife. Yes. Yes. Amen. I don't know about y'all, but I'll be saying, let me get up out of this bed right now. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Amen. And he says, but Lord, 
I love the way Abimelech addressed the Lord. He said, Lord, but when I took her, I, I, I didn't touch her. God said, I know you didn't touch her. I don't think y'all understand here. He couldn't touch her even if he wanted to. Because when God can hold you back from anything, God can give you power over your flesh and your trust in him. You don't have to do nothing you don't want to do. And you have power to overcome your nation. Some don't want to overcome their nation. Your pastor, I just couldn't help myself. Oh, pastor. Oh, please. You're killing me. Well, it's better me to tell you the truth right here and now than you wait and stand before God. And he's going to say, how come? And I don't want to hear nothing about, I just couldn't do, I had to sample it first. I had to sample him and see if he were real and see if she were real. If we were compatible. Well, you don't want to hear that kind of preaching. Abraham got his wife and his own soul in trouble by conniving and scheming. And a man like to lost his kingdom and his life for somebody telling a lie. Wait a minute, you mean to tell me Abraham lied? I have a lie just as bad as a fool lie. Because a lie is a lie. Some people look you right in your face and tell you what they call a bold-faced lie. You know, you figure it out. The Bible said that God told Abimelech, that man, wife you got, you got to give it back to him. Come on, somebody. He couldn't even go to sleep. God said that after you give him back his, uh, his wife, give him some silver and some gold and give him some goats and sheep and give him a whole lot of this and a whole lot of that. And you ask him to pray for you that I will forgive you. I mean, I don't know how blessed you can be. Abraham tried to give Sarah away and God said, not so. Because when God promised you something, God is going to bring it to pass. You ain't got to be looking all over tarnation. You ain't got to be trying this and trying that. You ain't got to be seeing this and seeing that. You just wait on the Lord. I mean, a biblical couldn't even wait for the morning light to show up. The Bible says he woke up all his servants and told him, look, go take this woman. Come on, somebody. He even said to Abraham, why did you do this to me? You know what Abraham say? He didn't see God in this place. If you study the scripture, he didn't recognize God in this place, and he was afraid. You see, you don't know who God is saving. And you don't know when God is going to save you. There's a lot of people don't know you saved. Until they run into you in the bread aisle over at the stop and shop. A Shaw's Market, come on somebody, or the meat packing place, come on somebody, or the frozen food section. How you doing, sister girl? You looking good. You always was what I had on my mind. Too bad I'm saved, I'm married. I got a husband. Come on somebody, I got a wife. Come on somebody. And then you got to pick up your garment and keep going because once you start hanging around and thinking and figuring out something, trying to get slick. The only thing about being slick when you're young, you get old, you couldn't be even slicker. And think nobody can't catch you. But the word said that God sees in darkness as well as seeing the light. Amen. You heard the old expression, if walls could talk, Amen. what you've been saying about me. Yeah. Well, come on, somebody. Let the walls keep silence. Come on, somebody. Time is running out, saints. Abraham got blessed. But he made a grave mistake. God could have killed him dead. But I'm here to tell you today, it is the blessing of the wideness of God's loving mercy that showed forth to Abraham, that showed forth to you and I. God could have been there and killed you. God could have been there and destroyed you and your loved one. But God gave you a promise, if I save you, I'll save you and your household too. Now, if you're acting up, come on, somebody. Your children acting up. Everybody got to act. Come on, somebody. 
You wonder why is this happening to me? Why things don't come together? Why things don't work out for me? You need to go before the Lord. You need to take your plate on your kitchen table and turn it down. And you need to fast and pray until you get an answer from God. And say, Lord, I need an answer. And I'm here to tell you, before you can speak it, God will send you an answer. When you mean business with God, God will mean business with you. If you want to play with God, you're only playing by yourself. Because the God we serve don't play games. Oh, my Lord. God knows everything. I think the, the writer says there is a wideness of God's mercy like the wideness of the sea. There's a kindness in his justice which is more than liberty. There's a welcome for the sinner more greater than the good. There's a mercy with the Savior. There's healing in his blood. For the love of God is broader than the measure of a man's mind. And the heart of the eternal is most wonderfully kind. If our love were but more single, we should make him at his word, or take him at his word. And our lives would be all sunshine and the sweetness of our Lord's love. Amen. Isn't that beautiful? Amen. Isn't that beautiful? How people can write unto the Lord a glorious song. How you can make a praise unto the Lord under a pure turn of praise and testimony reports. Amen. Testify what God has done. What God is able to do. Amen. Amen. Don't worry about trying to con, con a story up. Or come up with some crazy idea that's going to drive you mad. Amen. Look at somebody and say, the loving kindness, the loving kindness of, God is wider of God is wider in his loving mercy. In his loving mercy. You and I need to understand that, that God dealt with Daniel. And Daniel, the Bible said in chapter 8 of the book of Daniel that Daniel had a vision about a ram with two horns fighting a goat with one horn. And the goat that was rugged was able to destroy the ram with the two horns. And as the vision began to reveal itself, the, the, the horn of the, the goat that defeated the ram dropped off and out of that horn came four other horns and then a little small horn. And he didn't quite understand the vision of the dream, but the Bible said that there stood one that was in shining and glorious bright raiment that was able to speak to Daniel in these visions. And the Bible said when he began to explain to him about the latter days that the vision was so great for Daniel that he got sick to his stomach. He was a man of vision and dreams. He saw the desolation, abomination of desolation. Uh, the wicked one sitting in the holy place where he had no business sitting. Coming up through the ranks of all the four world empires. The same vision he saw when Nebuchadnezzar thought that nobody could reveal to him, but God showed it to him. You and I need to understand that we're living in the last days. Bible said that Daniel started fasting and praying. And for 21 to 24 days, he was trusting the Lord. The Bible said he was praying and trying to do the king's business, but he was still fasting and praying. I'm here to tell you today, if you want to ask him for God, you mean business with him. You get serious about serving him and turn your plate down. Well, come on, somebody. Not only on Wednesday as a corporate fasting day, but praying the fast on your own before the Lord. Amen. And I'm here to tell you, God will answer you. Yes, he will. He'll reveal things to you. Yes, Come on, somebody. Yes, it might be more than you can bear, but I'm here to tell you that when Daniel was fasting and praying on that 24th day of that month, 
The Bible said there came one by the name of Gabriel that had appeared unto him to bring him the message of the latter days. In May the 14th, 1948, Israel came to be a nation among many nations. Ushering, ushering in the last days. Amen. You and I are living in the last days. Amen. Daniel was perplexed. And Gabriel said, I want you to know the end times. I want you to understand the 70th week of that which is yet to become in the last days after he who will come to deliver you. This angel began to explain, this Gabriel, this archangel, said, I want you to know something. The very first day that you bowed down and prayed, God heard your prayer. Amen. You got to know that when you pray, yes. that God hears your prayer. Yes. You got to know that when you pour your heart out, yes. God know what you need. Many think that God don't answer prayer. But somebody say the devil is a liar. God got a way of answering you and answering me in the desires of your heart. How many ever got a, a blessing, a prayer answered in the desire of their hearts? You didn't ask God for it. You didn't mention it to nobody. You didn't say nothing about it. But the desire was on the temple of your heart. When you have a passion for souls, when your mind is made up, Lord, you see my heart, won't God be good to you? Won't God be good to you? I don't mean to be nosy. I don't mean to be proud in your business. But ain't God been good to you? I ain't trying to get up in your business and find out what you're doing. But hasn't God been good to you? Don't tell me when you're going through something that God won't feel sorry for you. Oh, hallelujah. When God feels sorry for you, I'm telling you, you got ready, you're about ready to get blessed beyond your measure. When God look at you and see your heart aching and going through something and you didn't cry it out and you say, Lord, show me a token. David said in Psalm 86, Lord, show me a token for good that them that hate me may see it and be ashamed. And you know how the token comes? When they see you, they can't even say good morning. They lips sticking out like a turtleneck sweater and they grease and looking and they mad with you and they can't do nothing about you. And you go all on and praise God in long as you hanging out with them and you drinking Chablis man of Chevy better known as MD 2020 you smoking reef and partying all night and you can just barely make it to church breath smell like a liquor steel smelling like clothes been in a party all night you know one thing about smoking reefer? When I used to smoke reefer, I try to wash up and clean up, put on some perfume, be as high as a kite. And I'm thinking, nobody don't know I'm high, and everybody in the room know you high but you. Everybody know you drunk, because you can't get one foot in front of the... I'm going to get this one right. You right here, stay over here now. You and I need to understand that God answered Daniel's prayer 21 days ago. The very first day when he prayed, the angel wanted them to know, oh, by the way, since you were praying and you didn't think God heard your prayer, he heard you when you cried out the first time. Don't think for one minute God don't hear your cry. God don't know when you're in need. God don't know your desire. The word already said, he know what you need even before you ask him. Now, let me just go on record by saying this. I don't know no other God that exists 
whether it be a mud god made by clay or ceramic, whatever you want to call it, or made by iron, come on somebody, or made by the hands of man that can know what you're thinking before you ask. You tell me who he is. You tell me there is another God, and I say you're a liar. Because there is no other God. He's a God among gods. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And David understood his power and his majesty and his wonderful work to the children of man. David understood his handiwork. David went as far as to say, the God who created eyes, can he not see? The God that created ears, can he not hear? The God that created a tongue, can he not speak? Look at somebody and say, you ain't got nothing on God. Look at him again and say, you have to thank God that you are made in his image. Now when God created all the animals, if man said we came from slime or monkey, my God don't look like no monkey. My God don't look like no giraffe. If anything, everything that God made in those six days, when he created Adam, he told Adam, it's your responsibility to name this animal. It ain't one animal that came to Adam that God said, you look like God. So don't believe that devil when he tell you a lie that man came from slime or came from a monkey. And by the way, that man did come from monkey while there's still monkeys over at the zoo. That make any sense? Because man ain't come from no monkey. How come man can't accept the fact that God created man and animal? Because man want to be in charge. Man want to call the shots. Instead of accepting the fact that we made in the image of God and received that by faith, it's the same way you got to accept Jesus Christ by faith that he died and rose again. Amen. Somebody amen. say amen. 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 Hallelujah. You see, Daniel understood all the visions and dreams from Nebuchadnezzar to the three Hebrew boys, and yet he saw the, the abomination of desolation that is yet to come. Let me just talk to you for a moment. Do you realize that not only are we living in the last days, and the reason why time is going by so fast, and uh, July is already gone, and August is ready to show up? Do you realize we're in 2012? Come on, somebody. And you look around and see things that are happening faster than you can put it together, and people are killing one another, and murdering one another, and people are running to and fro in the world, and we're living in the last days, and knowledge shall increase? Come on, somebody. These are the signs where the weather patterns are often killed. Amen. Come on, somebody. And man and build a space station ready for the war of Armageddon. Come on, somebody. In the valley of Gog and Magog, in the valley of Jehoshaphat. Come on, somebody. We're living in the last day. I'm trying to talk to you like the angel was talking in the book of Revelation to the John and the Adam of Patterns. God will show it to you. Don't let the world tell you these things are just happening by chance. Don't let the world deceive you and say, remember the days of, of uh, antebellum before slavery when things used to be this way. We're in a new day. Come on, somebody. It's a new thing. And God is doing a new thing in the body of Christ. It may be old to some folks, but every day God is renewing my spirit. He renewing my mind. The more you read the word, the more you know about God. The more God get in your mind and get in your thought. And he said, ask what you will, and it shall be granted unto you. Look at somebody and say, God got you covered wherever you go. Mariah, you can be in Kentucky, and God will be in Kentucky. Come on, somebody. 
You can be in Georgia, and the God we serve here is down in Georgia. You can go to the Bahamas, and you can lay in the sun. But the God is in Bahama, is also in Israel. You can take off and buy you some property on the moon. And guess what, Theo? God is on the moon. And if you don't like the moon, go on down to Venus. And you'll find him down there. If you don't like Venus, ride on out to Saturn. You'll find out he's out there. You can leave the Milky Way. And he owns all the Milky Way. Not the one you eat, but the one that God created. Well, come on, somebody. Look at somebody and say, God is everywhere. Ain't nobody stole God. Ain't nobody done God away with. God is not dead, but he's alive. And for those who think he's dead, somebody show me where his grave at. Because God is not dead. Praise God. This is Pastor Watkins from Community Revival and Outreach Ministries. I trust that you enjoyed that wonderful service we just uh, had, and I trust the Lord that it touched your heart and your spirit, and it also inspired your soul. But beyond just listening to a message, we also ask you to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. And how you do that, you just simply ask and bow before Christ. And if you're willing to lay hands upon your TV or bow your heads right where you are or sitting, if you just bow here with me and we'll pray the prayer of faith. Heavenly Father, we truly thank you for all things in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that you forgive us of all our sins and have mercy upon our soul. And that not only you save us, O Lord, from our sins, but O Lord, that you would sanctify our hearts and sanctify our souls as well as, O Lord, baptize us with the Holy Ghost and that with fire. We accept you, O Lord, into our hearts and our life. We confess our sins and we believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and that God raised him from the dead. And by believing and accepting this, O Lord, we claim to be saved in his holy name. We give thanks and praise for all things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I trust the Lord that your heart is fixed with the Lord and that your blessing will be assured and that you'll come out and fellowship with us. And if not with us, your, your own local church in your area and that God will be a blessing to you until we see you again. Take care and God bless. Bye-bye.